I'm gonna show you exactly how you can fix your outside in swing path. Now, using this method, on average, I fix people's out to in downswing in around five minutes because we change the DNA of what you do in your swing. As well as that, I'm gonna upgrade how you control this face in this video too. Let's get into it. I'm also gonna to prove to you with data exactly how we have moved it. Now, simply, if, if you're swinging out to in, we're coming in the downswing, we're sort of glancing across that golf ball. I would almost count it as sort of a, I guess, a hammer move across the ball in this direction. Whereas what we want to learn is that, isn't it? That inside out swing path. And we're gonna use this data to help us show you this move. Now, look at the screen here. On the screen, we have the good and the bad setup. And what you will see is a distinct difference between where the top of my, more the middle of my sternum is to my belt buckle. Let me explain this. So if I grab this hoop, and this hoop would illustrate our swing, okay? If we said our out to in swing would be on that angle, exaggerated, I know, and our in to out swing would be on that angle. Where a lot of us go wrong on that bad one, we have with driver our sternum and our belt buckle sort of stacked on top of each other, sort of in that motion. Now, when we start here, and this is what I was meaning about the DNA of your swing and why this change is so quick to make. When they're stacked on top of each other, this encourages us to swing more this way. This encourages our weight to this way. It encourages our path to move this way. So you can clearly see stacking this way encourages a move across. So if we now put the good position, right, where my sternum feels a little bit behind, a little bit behind my belt buckle, well, straight away, I make the same motion. Look at what this is now encouraging. I'm changing the DNA of my setup to start here to allow me to access this part of the circle. So the first part of this lesson is just slightly adjusting that setup. We've got one more foot and hip motion to make here. But the first thing I want you to understand is we've got to have the right position of our sternum to our belt buckle. We want it more here, not on top, and more in this direction. Change the DNA. So look at this example quickly before we make that final DNA change. If I have my chest ahead of my hips, so in that motion, that was the sort of sternum ahead of our belt buckle, look how the club path here on the data is going to encourage that across look. So have a look at this. I'm going to exaggerate this and look where my path is encouraged to be. Now on the data here, we are going to get, as it appears, 7.9 left. So really across the golf ball. Now let's prove to you what happens when we get the opposite. So when our chest is behind our hips. Now the final little tweak I want you to make with this DNA of the setup before we talk about this club face and finishing position which is vital if you want that high draw coming in with that into out swing path is look at this right we've already spoken about the tilt with the shoulders changing the circle of our swing. But another thing we can do here, if I keep the butt of my club pointing at my belt buckle is bring those hips a little bit closed. Look what that's really doing. It's sort of opening up this space. Whereas if you made that first change, but then had your hips here, you can still see what direction my hips are pointing. So really feel those hips are a little bit closed close the target to feel as though you've got that space. So we're now gonna hit this one away. Remember, 7.9 left, quite a way left. And then we're gonna talk about the final piece to this puzzle. So have a look at my hip setup, compare this to what you are doing. And I'm into that final bit of the club face. Right, here we go, look at that setup, I'm really behind it. Watch this, just a soft one. Look at the shape I hit on that, a little baby draw. I mean, literally, I put so little effort into that and I swung 3.2 degrees to the right. So I've changed from this to this just through making those DNA changes to my setup. Now, the final piece of this puzzle is absolutely crucial because a lot of people go, Alex, well, 
if I swing to the right, I feel like it's gonna go to the right. Well, yeah, that would make sense because if you leave your face open in that direction, the ball would go that way. But what I want you to focus on is this, and this is how I would complete the swing. I want you to feel as though, as we're coming into the ball, we have an element of our, potentially our feeling of knuckles moving away. That would be a great feeling to square. But the one I love and the one I tell my students is this finishing position, butt of the club points to target. Now, the reason why that works so well is if I don't point it to target, I tend to leave the face open. If I point it to target and I do this slowly, it starts the process of those knuckles moving away, closing up the club, working round, and finishing like this. Essentially, releasing the club. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because this is your only place to get free, simple golf tips that are here to actually help you, yes you, improve your game.